You're listening to Kids Coast Radio. Here's your host, Jackie Daly. Hey everyone, thanks for logging in. My name is Jackie and I'd like to officially welcome you to Kids Coast at Home. We had a blast last week kicking off our Three Green Circus and it looks like there's still some popcorn on the floor. (laughs) This week we have more fun and interesting acts, more death-defining feats of skill and more high-flying showstoppers. Whew, that last one really makes my heart jump to think about folks flying from the air from one trapeze to the other. Circus performers really have to trust their fellow acrobats to do stunts like that. And that's exactly what we're talking about this month, trust. Trust is putting your confidence in someone you can depend on. Now, of course, we know that we can trust God no matter what, and hopefully we can trust each other too. Trust always helps us when we're working together. Now let's see if we can practice that with a fun game for my friend, Kaylee. Our first game today is called Over Under. I'm Kaylee. Amy's joining us today. Hi guys. Are you guys ready for a game? I'm excited. All right, any idea? I think we're just guessing either over or under. Kind of, kind of. Okay, the way this game works, we're gonna see a fact, something random, and then one of us will pick a number that we think is the answer to the question. And then, if you, if I guess the number, okay. you guess if it's over or under, and you okay. guys will be guessing with her as well. Perfect. And we'll take turns That's doing that. That's what I thought. Okay, ready? Easy peasy. Perfect. We're gonna do great on this Let's one. take a look at the first one in case yeah. it still doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay. And we'll start it out. How many moons does Saturn have? Can I throw out a, a number? Seven. Seven? Okay. We have to go over or under. What do you think? Is it over, more than seven, or under, less than seven? I'm going over. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? That's good. Let's see. Definitely it was over. way off. 62. <laughs> I was thinking about something else. You know. Yeah. It was only off by 55. Yeah. It's totally fine. I was just, I was okay. trying to throw you off. <laughs> It almost didn't worked. work. <laughs> okay. Let's see the next one. All right. All right. What was the average price of gas in the U.S. in 1981? I know this because I was um, there. Okay. Oh. Well, I was going to give the number, but that means you should be able to get it right. Yep. You ready? Yep. I'm going to say 78 cents. Under. Oh, under. 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 Yep. What do you guys think? Let's see. It was not. That's Were not- you driving in 1981? No. Okay. <laughs> Let's well, go to the next one. All right. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I was. Okay. How many muscles does a cat have in each ear? <laughs> You're not a fan of cats. Cats don't like me. No, is the thing. I love them. They're cute. They don't like me. So okay. I'm gonna say uh, 14. 14. Um. I guess I'll go under. What do you guys think? Yeah, no clue. Let's see. Two or I threw you off. I knew it was 32 and I just purposely said 14. So you think that was a high number. Understood. (laughs) Let's go to the next one. How many different species of koala are there? I have a guess this time. Never heard of two. Um, Of two? Two? (laughs) I don't know. We're going to go two. Okay. What do you think? Over or under? Um, I'm going to go over. I think this is a trick question. Okay. What do you guys think? Awesome, let's see. Ooh, so it was a trick the other way. Yeah, they're not multiple. That's kind of tricky. Okay. Okay, see the next one. How many stitches are on a major league baseball? I'm confident you know this. I... Down to the exact number. Yes, I do. And it is uh, 333. Okay. That seems like a lot. I think I'm gonna go under. What do you guys think? Let's find out. Teach yourself. Oh. 108. Oh. I thought, uh, but you thought three three baseballs. That Did they not say how many stitches in yeah. three? Yeah. Oh, okay. So we were right. Let's go to the next one. Okay. How many pounds of corn does the average American eat in a year? Corn. I don't. Um, five? Five pounds? What do you think? Over pounds or under? Pounds of corn think? pounds, not just ears. Yeah. Pounds of corn people I guess. eat this. In a um, year, I'm gonna go under. I hope that I hope that's less. What let's do you guys see. think? Alright, let's find out. 25, 25 pounds of corn? <laughs> For one Whoa, person? What? 
That's a lot. That is a lot. They didn't count me in that. Cause no. I did way under. Same. You guys eat 25 pounds of corn in a year? I mean, it's good, but not 25 Same. pounds though. No. All right, let's do our last one. Okay. Approximately how many M&Ms are sold every day in America? I know this because I eat M&Ms every day. And so that was the question, right? Every day. Approximately how many, how many M&Ms are sold uh, every day in America? So, oh, sold, not eaten. Yes. Yes. That's different. I don't know. Um, you really how many? Like, are I they talking about right bags away. of M&Ms? Or are they talking about individual, like, the how many? It says M&Ms. So just... It's a sure. single thing. So if you buy one pack, there's 50, 65 in there. Are you going to do all the math on this? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay. And if there's like 100 packs per family per day, I'm going to say 72,000. 100 packs per family per day? Well, okay. we have five people in my family. Okay. Um, I'm going to say a million. A million M&Ms? Yep. I feel like it might be higher. I'm going to go over. Oh. What do you guys think? All right, let's find out. 200 million. 200 million. Wow. Yeah. I was way off. I thought a million it's a was lot. a lot. It's a lot. Well, I think that maybe we should go get some M&Ms. Yes. You guys, get check this out. Get some corn. Or check it out. Welcome to another Story Lab. This week, we're talking about trust. Well, we look at the story of a man who had to dig himself out of a pretty big problem. Oh, and we're also going to be doing this. Three, two, one. Hey, 
Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about trust, which is putting your confidence in someone you can depend on. Sebastian, do you trust me? Yeah, sure. Why are you asking? <laughs> I read this thing online that you can fill up a plastic bag with water, stab through it with a sharp pencil, and ta-da! Nothing happens. The bag is leak-proof. Very cool. I mean, assuming you can trust the internet. Kids, you cannot always trust the internet. Great. So do you trust me to try out this amazing experiment? Yep. Do your thing. Do you trust me to try it out over your head? Uh, uh no, no, that, that's different. <laughs> Trust, my friend. This better work. Let's make it. Top secure? Top secure. Pencil? Mm -hmm. Pencil? Who even uses pencils? Pencil? Sharpen? I got an idea. Oh, sharpened. Sharp. Take a seat. I feel like my life is flashing right before my eyes. Don't be dramatic. Drum roll, please. Three, two, one. You can open your eyes. Oh, wow. That worked. Let's see it. <laughs> Nothing but graphite. <laughs> this amazing miracle of nature brought to you by plastic polymers. Plastic polymers are molecules like a chain of beads. They're so flexible that when you stab through, they just push back toward the pencil and form a temporary seal. So there you have it. The polymers are trustworthy, and so am I. Great, now do you trust me? Why? Because I have a pencil too. Oh no. Oh yes. <laughs> Ready, drum roll please, three. Two, one! <laughs> Ugh. It's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the very first book of the Old Testament, Genesis. God made our amazing world, but sin entered the world. People turned away from God and went their own way. But then, God picked one man, a guy named Abraham. And even though Abraham was like 90 years old and had no kids, God told him to look up. And God promised he would have more kids than stars in the sky. Yeah, and the entire world would be blessed through Abraham's family. And Abraham did have a kid, Isaac. Isaac just so happens to be the hero in our Story. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Hey Erica. In today's story, Isaac was in search of water. Isaac and his family and herdsmen lived out on the plains in the land of the Philistines. And for them, water was life. If they didn't have access to a good, clean well, they couldn't survive. Fortunately, Isaac and his family had some really great wells. They had plenty to drink and their crops were growing well. Isaac seemed right on track to be living out the promises God gave his father, Abraham. Unfortunately, the Philistines who lived nearby and their king, Abimelech, became jealous of Isaac's success. They shoveled dirt into his wells and he didn't have water anymore. You have become too powerful. Move away from us. Isaac had plenty of men who could stand against the Philistines and fight. But instead of fighting, he decided to trust God to take care of him. So Isaac chose to keep his cool. He and his family packed up everything they owned. They moved on and made camp in the Valley of Gerar, where Abraham had lived for a time, many years before. All right, man, let's open up those old wells my father dug. Abraham's old wells filled with cool, clear water once again. The happy herds and flocks could drink their fill. Things were great! Until the nearby Philistine herdsmen showed up to challenge Isaac's servants. Step aside! Your water's ours! You're gonna have to fight us for it! 
Whoa, whoa, easy does it, fellas. There's plenty of land in this valley for everyone. We'll move along. Again, Isaac could have fought back. But instead, he trusted. He and his family and his servants and flocks all moved camp down the valley. Once again, his servants set out to dig new wells. The new wells also produced clean, clear, cool water. But it wasn't long before the Philistine herders arrived on the scene to take over these new wells too. Yes, another day, another well for us. Take it down a notch, please. There's still room for everyone. But we could knock them flat. Yes, we could, but we're not going to. Move on out, boys. A third time, Isaac and his men moved camp, and Isaac's servants dug fresh wells once again. But this time, this time, Isaac was left in peace. In fact, King Abimelech himself showed up to make it official. Why have you come to me? You were angry with me and sent me away. We saw that the Lord was with you. Make a peace treaty with us. Give us your word that you won't harm us. Yeah, I can do that. Isaac prepared a feast for the Philistines. And early the next morning, the men made an agreement to keep peace with each other. Then, the Philistines went on their way. The end. So Isaac kept trusting God no matter what. And finally, Abimelech showed up to make peace. Yep, if Isaac had started fighting back, he might have been enemies with the Philistines forever. But sometimes God wants us to stand up, right? For sure. Trusting God can look a lot of different ways. <laughs> For sure. So what's our part in the story? Good question. You can trust God no matter what. For example, maybe you practice hard all summer to make the soccer team, but you don't. You can trust God that all your hard work matters and God has a different place for you to fit in. Or you're starting at a brand new school. You can walk through those doors trusting that you are loved by God and you will be okay, even if it takes a while to find your place. Oh, I totally had to trust God when I got a cavity filled last month. Right there. It did not feel super awesome. There are so many reasons to trust God. One of the best is because God sent Jesus to give his life for you and me. Putting your faith in Jesus shows you trust God. For sure. <laughs> I think y'all got it. Bye for now. So here's the thing. Trust God no matter what. Ooh, I gotta write this down. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. We'll see you next time. Hi there. Thanks for joining me today as I break down our Bible story. Okay, we've been talking lately about how God made an amazing world, but then Adam and Eve disobeyed God and sin entered the world. God chose one man, Abraham, to be a part of God's plan to make things right again. God promised Abraham that he'd have more kids than there are stars in the sky. And God promised that the whole world would be blessed through Abraham's family. Eventually, Abraham and his wife Sarah did have a child, a boy named Isaac. Isaac, his family, and his herdsmen lived on the plains in the land of the Philistines. And for them, water was life. There was a season when life was going pretty well. The crops were sprouting, the livestock herds were growing, the neighbors were peaceful. However, three different times, Isaac was forced to pack up his family and everything he owned to move. That would have been really hard. Yes, Isaac could have fought back and resisted the Philistines. However, this could have caused an ongoing conflict between Isaac and the Philistines. Instead, Isaac trusted God no matter what. As a result, the Philistine king showed up to make peace. Isaac's story reminds me to trust God even when I face difficulties. I doubt your neighbors will force you out of your house because they want your water, but you might get sick before the piano recital, your science test might be harder than you thought. The hardships you face matter and how you respond in those moments matters too. It's so important during our toughest times that we can trust God in all situations. We can turn to God when we don't know what to do. We can turn to God when we don't know what to say. 
Your situation might not turn around as quickly as you would like, but God will be with you and can comfort you with love throughout it. In Kids Coast, we believe there is no person or thing more important than God. One of the best reasons you can trust God is because God sent Jesus for me and for you. When you put your faith in Jesus, it shows that you can trust God. God never promises life will be easy, even if you put your faith in Jesus. However, God does promise to never leave you. As we wrap up, I want you to think about this one question. How do you react when things don't go your way? What does it mean to trust God in those situations? These might be difficult questions for you to answer, and that's okay. How to trust God is something we learn throughout our entire lives. I'm still learning it too. For Isaac, trusting God looked like moving on and not fighting. Sometimes trusting God means standing up for ourselves. The truth is, trusting God can look a lot of different ways, but it's important that we choose to trust God and ask God for wisdom to know what to do in any situation. So remember, trust God no matter what. God is with us and God is always there to help us. Let's pray and ask God to help us trust no matter what. Dear God, thank you that we can trust you in any situation of life and that you love us and you care for us all the time. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone is part of a bigger story. It's a bigger story than you can imagine. It's a big story about a really big God. Discover the story that shows you the character of God. Hey, yo, <laughs> I'm Caleb, and we're about to take a dive into my Bible. <laughs> the Bible is no ordinary book. It's a collection of 66 books filled with history, wisdom, letters, poetry, and adventure. Together, they paint a picture of the story God has been telling since the beginning of time. God created us and loves us deeply. Even when we turned our backs, God made a way for us to return to relationship. And in the end, God promises to right every wrong and heal everything that's broken. When we see how God has worked through time, we can have confidence that God is working in our story too. That's what real trust is all about. And I've got four stories to show us what it can look like. We get started in the very first book of the Bible, Genesis. Here, darkness has crept into the world. People have turned from God and chosen to live only for themselves. But in the midst of it, God calls a man named Abraham to leave his home and travel to a brand new land. God promises that through Abraham's family, the whole world will be blessed with God's love. There's just one catch. Um, Abraham and Sarah don't have any children yet, and they're already old enough to be great grandparents. Time to slide ahead a few chapters. And spoiler alert, now Abraham and Sarah do have a son, Isaac. Now, Isaac is living in the land God has promised, but neighboring tribes want him out. Three times herders steal water wells Isaac has dug. Isaac has plenty of men to fight back, so he's forced to choose. Engage in a brawl, or trust that God will provide in a different way at the right time. Let's move ahead two chapters. Isaac now has two sons, Jacob and Esau, and the conflict between them threatens to tear their family apart. Jacob finds himself alone on a journey into the unknown, and who can he trust? As night closes in, heaven opens up with a spectacular stairway toward an answer. We wrap up in Genesis 32. Here, Jacob prepares to face his brother Esau for the first time in many years. The brothers didn't part well. So when Jacob hears that Esau is approaching with 400 men, his stomach does a backflip. <laughs> Now Jacob must choose to listen to his fears 
or call on the one person he can truly trust. Things may seem to be in constant motion around you, but when you look at how God showed up for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know you can place your confidence in God too. That's real trust. And I can't wait to see how it plays out in you and me. Welcome back for another game. Earlier we learned how many muscles were in a cat's ear, so I think now we're gonna learn how well they jump. Okay. What do you think? I think they jump pretty well. I, pretty I high, agree. pretty far. Some of these mm -hmm. cats, not so much though. Ooh. This game is called Nailed It or Failed It. Ooh. We're going to see a short clip of a video. It's gonna pause right before the cat jumps. We have to guess, did they nail it Ooh. or did they fail it? Okay. It's one of our favorites. Yeah, we so should be one. really good at this. I'm excited. Let's take a look at the first one. Ooh, he's trying to get on the top of the door. Yes. Failed it, for think, sure. You think failed it? Yeah, that's really high. Okay, what do you guys think? Right. I'm gonna go nailed it on this one. Oh. Just We're going opposites. Do you, yeah, do you watch cats a lot? No. Oh. Let's see. Wow, that's impressive. I mean. I didn't see that at all happening. Nope, okay. you worked it Good out. Good for him, I'm glad. That would've hurt. Okay, you guys ready for the next one? Let's try again. Let's take a look. We're looking at the oh, big look one. Look at all the little babies. There's a lot of oh, them. Oh, they're so cute. cute. They are really cute. It's a lot. Oh, what's he jumping on? Just the bed? It looks like it could be that or maybe a window. I'm sure he nailed ledge. it. You that think doesn't look it? very far. All right, I'm gonna go opposite then. Fails it. What do you guys think? I'm just picking I, I, I know. I'll pick first next time. Okay. All right, let's see. Oh. Oh, nope. Whoops. Failed it, plus scared all of the kittens. <laughs> Very badly. Oh, that was funny. I hate all to right. laugh. I hope he wasn't hurt, though. He landed no, on his feet. Fine. He's, He's fine. totally fine. Let's see the next one. Okay, you guess first. Okay. I am gonna guess nailed it. What do you think? Oh, I don't even know where he's jumping. To do? I don't know. I don't I'm know. gonna say it's failed it. it. I don't think he's it. gonna make it. He's he doesn't look like he's got good form there, from what I can see from that picture. Okay, a very clear picture. What, which one are you going with? Failed. Okay. What about you guys? All right, let's see. Watch his form. It's not very good. See. Oh, definitely <laughs> failed it. Is it, it. bad definitely when we laugh it. when they do no, that? No, it's okay. not. So it's okay it's to laugh. Not. Okay, yeah, totally. It's funny. Totally. He's fine. He ran away. He's happy. Yeah. Let's see the next one. On himself. Ooh. You want to go first? Me I'm just gonna say nailed it, just because okay. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna keep flip flopping. Okay. Then I'll go failed it on this one. Okay. What about you guys? Let's see. Yeah. Where he's going? Oh, oh. So, do you see how Perfect. good I'm at this game? Yeah, you're great. Yeah, very good. Very good. They helped me. Let's see the next one. Oh, to the window. He's too low. Failed it. You think failed? Yeah, okay. absolutely. I'll go nailed. What about you guys? Awesome. Let's find out. Yeah, I saw it from the beginning. He was way was too low. Terrible. Yeah, when I jump on windows, you have to like get a. When you jump on windows? Uh, yeah, like you have to okay. really catapult yourself up. Yeah, he didn't do it good. I, I might need some lessons sometimes. Sure, I'm anytime. Not I'm Any, I, do you like doing that too? I mean, I've never oh, tried. It's so really we'll fun. See. Perfect. Yes. Okay, we've got one more to go. Oh, you great. Ready for the last one? Yes, I am. Let's take a look. Oh. Okay. Nailed it or failed it? Mm, what do you think? I've been 100% so far, haven't mm. I? In my mind, I've been okay. 100%. Perfect. I'm gonna say nailed it. Okay, what do you guys think? It's a little gate. All right, I'm going opposite. Failed it. Let's find out. 
Yes, that was easy. Look how easy he made it look like. Awesome. Yeah, good job. That was cute. You oh, knocked the baby Wait, we got over. a little more. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I mean, the cat Nailed still it got twice. over. Yes. So good job. I guess the cat good. wins. Yes. You guys did awesome. Now check this out. Why is everything so small? Oh, it's supposed to be small. It, it's a flea circus. Fleas? Yeah, yeah. Tiny little fleas are performing their own circus. <laughs> huh. Huh. I don't understand why nothing's moving, though. It's supposed to be moving. I don't see any fleas. Oh, no. Sure, sure. The fleas are missing? Huh. The fleas are missing! Yeah, I wonder where they could be. <laughs> ah. Hey everybody, welcome to the So and So Show. I'm John. And I'm Brandon, and we are so glad to have you all with us today. John asked me why. Why? Because Today is a big day for me and John. It is. We both had this dream for a long time to be Cirque performers. We have. And today is finally the day we step into our destiny. Our what? Our destiny. I've reserved a spot at the globally renowned Cirque training facility. Cirque, you say? Cirque today. Well, I say, so today, we'll be doing Cirque. You keep saying we. Our dream of spinning through the air on a suspended hula hoop and flying through the sky between the trapeze bars is about to be realized. It's not really my dream. Let's go. Okay. Wow, this is awesome. It's everything I could have wished for. You guys must be John and Brandon. Uh, yeah, you must be Frankie. You can call me Coach. Oh, oh well, thanks for having us here, Coach. So, where do you want to start? Uh oh. We've got Sear Wheel, Aerial Silks, uh -huh. Lyra, uh, of course, the trapeze over there. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I, I want to try everything. Uh, I mean, I'm sure I'm going to be great at most of it, but I, I want to find the place where I really fit in, you know? Oh. I do. Yeah. Uh, this is Sammy. She's going to be demonstrating for us today. Oh, hi. Hi, So, Sammy. uh, where to? Uh, what are you thinking, John? Uh, uh, I'm thinking maybe the silks. Okay. Right this way. Oh. 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 Brandon, you are so right. That was amazing. For you, I couldn't do any of it. There's no place that I fit in. Uh, uh, now, you weren't that bad. Says the natural. <laughs> you really think so? So you guys have a good time? Oh, oh yes. Thank you so much for the lesson, Coach. <laughs> well, you guys did great for your first day. Are you serious? I, there was not one thing that I did right. I... I will never be a professional Cirque performer! Well, training for this takes years. You can't expect This was my one shot Cirque today! We do have other things. No, to thank do. you! You know what? I'm done. I'm done! No. Oh! Brandon? Gabby! Walk right! Okay. Cirque today! Cirque no way! Uh, it's, it's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey 
guys. Hey, Kellen. Hey, Kellen. Aw, are you upset about the circ, Jim? I don't belong anywhere, Kellen. That's not true. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. But you know what? I think our Bible story today will help you out. Yeah. Well, what do you have in mind? Well, in my mind, I was thinking about using our heads because it's time for Human Head Puppet Theater. <laughs> Today's story comes from the book of Genesis. God chose a man named Abraham and promised to bless the entire world through his family. When Abraham died, though, his son Isaac trusted God just like his father did before. Isaac lived where God told him to live, and the Lord blessed him. Oh, I'm so glad the Lord has blessed me and my family. Hope our crops do well. Hmm. <gasps> wow! That's 100 times more than what I planted! Isaac became very rich. Whoa! And he had a bunch of animals. <laughs> Look at all these wonderful blessings! In fact, Isaac had so much that the Philistines who lived around Isaac became jealous of him. Hey! Hey! Oh! Oh! <laughs> Why, if it isn't Abimelech, king of the Philistines, <laughs> what brings you here? You have become too powerful. You must move away from us. Oh. Okay. All right, let's see. Uh, come on, cows. Let's. I can't. <sighs> all right, animals, come with me. Let's go! Isaac moved his family and all his animals to a new place, the Valley of Gerar. His father, Abraham, had dug wells there for drinking water. But the Philistines had stopped them up, so Isaac had to dig them out again. Well, I guess it's time to open up this well. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. yes. You need some help? Oh, yes, thank you. All right. Oh, you got a shovel, too? Yeah. <laughs> wow. These are very tiny shovels. Yeah, well, let's do it faster. Okay. Isaac and his servants dug the wells until they found fresh water to drink. <laughs> wow, that's super fresh! Now I can finally relax and make a new home. <laughs> Not so fast! These wells are on Philistine land. That water is ours. No, uh it's ours! We dug it! Let's fight. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. We can always build a new well. <laughs> it's no use arguing. Okay. So Isaac's servants dug another well. But unfortunately, the Philistines were there to argue over that one too. It's ours. 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 Let's find another spot. Isaac moved and dug another well. And this time, no one argued over it. <laughs> yeah, now the Lord has given us room. Now we'll be successful in the land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's gonna catch on. <sighs> Lord, thank you. You are faithful and worthy to be praised. <clears throat> oh, oh, Abimelech, what are you doing here? You, you, you sent me away, remember? It's pretty clear that the Lord is with you. Ah. So I'd like to make a peace treaty with you. Uh, I don't harm you, you don't harm me, you know, all that good stuff. All right. Well, how about you come over and we will feast together tomorrow at my treat. Oh. And then the next day we will get together and sign a treat E. Ah. <laughs> well, let's shake on it. Okay. Even though Isaac had been kicked out of his land where he'd been living and his wells had been stopped up or fought over, he kept trusting God and the Lord blessed him. The end. Thanks, Kellen. And thank you, guys. Yeah, things weren't going Isaac's way, but he didn't let that bother him. Yeah, he, he really trusted God to provide for him and to help him find where he belonged. He sure did. Sometimes when things aren't going the way we want or expect, we forget that God is still in control, and we forget that God still loves us very much. We can put our trust in God and Jesus no matter what we're going through. 
you know, that's, that's very helpful for me to remember. I'm still upset that I didn't do well at the Cirque stuff, but I know I can trust God to help me find where I belong. That's terrific. Thanks. Hey, you're welcome. I'll see you next time. I have learned a lot today. Yeah, me too. And I, I think I know how to help you all learn with me. Hmm. Reveal the question. How do you react when things don't go your way? Today, I did not react very well. I gave up hope and was pretty hard on myself. Yeah. Well, what about you? Maybe you get angry or scared, mm -hmm. or maybe you ask someone to help you. Yeah, there will be lots of times in your life when things don't go your way. But whatever happens, we can still trust that God will one day make things right. Mm -hmm. Talk about it together. How do you react when things don't go your way? And until next time, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And this was The So-and-So Show. Yes, it was. All right, man. So you think you want to give it another try? I do. Okay. I'm going to try one I haven't tried yet. It's called the aerial rope. All right. Oh, all right. Go for it. All right. The aerial rope. <laughs> Just, you know, we'll see what he does. Really good, Brandon. Um, I'll go try. <laughs>
There are so many ways to trust God in so many different situations where we need to trust God. Maybe this school year is a little challenging for you because your best friend moved away and you need to find a new group of friends. Maybe your family is going through some big changes right now. Maybe you're having a disagreement with someone you're not sure how to make things better with. If you're in a situation where you're not sure what to do, take some time to talk to God about it. You can talk to other people who follow God too and ask them what they think you should do. You could pray and talk to God about it together. Now, that's all we have for this week. We hope you join us again next time. In the meantime, here are some discussion questions that you can talk about with your small group. I'll see you later. Bye, y'all. To find ways to get involved at Seacoast Church, text SERVE to 320-320. There are many opportunities for families to find ways to make a difference.